Okay, hello everybody. It's Mrs. Gerald from Artful Journeys at Connections. Welcome to my very first recording for YouTube, since we are not going to be meeting in person this week. So I have a Bible verse before we get started. I don't have it written down, but it's from Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. It says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. And I am so thankful that we can have peace no matter where we are or what we're doing or what's going on in the world around us. We have the peace of Christ. So if you're worried about anything today, just remember God wants you to have peace and he is there for you. Just pray and talk to him about it and he will give you all the peace that you need. Well, today I want to show you a couple things you can do um, since St. Patrick's Day is coming up and we're going to make some shamrocks and do a fun transfer. So what you're going to need today are these items. You're going to need a black Sharpie. I have two markers here. I have a Sharpie marker and this is a regular marker like a Crayola marker. This one's from Target. It's a water-based. This is not the kind we need. So I'm going to put this away off the screen because we want a waterproof marker for our black. So we're gonna use a black Sharpie marker. We're also gonna use colored markers like Crayola markers, or maybe you have some Rose Art markers, or these ones are from Target. Um, any water-based marker will do. What you don't want are the Sharpie colored markers because we want our colors to bleed. We're gonna be using foil like we did for one of our previous projects this year for the Keith Herring project. And we're gonna be doing some water transfer. So we want our colors to blend well with water. We're gonna need white paper. If you have construction paper, that's gonna be the best. I have regular copier paper here. We're gonna use that and I'll show you what the difference looks like. But this is the, um, the white sulfite or construction paper that we use in our class. And this is gonna give the best feel. But whatever you have at home, just go ahead and use that and it'll be fine. We also need a pencil. So you're gonna need a pencil. We need a squirt bottle with a little bit of water in it. Any kind of squirt bottle is fine as long as it's with water. And we're gonna need a piece of foil, which I have here laid out. The thing you wanna remember is that your foil has to be bigger than your piece of paper. Mine checks out. So just make sure your foil is bigger than your paper. I had one big piece of paper and I cut it in half because I'm gonna work small today. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is move that foil out of the way, get a piece of paper, and what I want to do first is create a drawing. I want to make some shamrocks, and I'm gonna show you an easy way to make some shamrocks for your art project today. So the first thing I'm gonna do with my pencil is just make a few crosses. You know Easter's coming up after St. Patrick's Day. So we're in that time of year where we're thinking about shamrocks and green growing things and also, also Easter coming up. So I'm gonna make a few kind of curvy crosses like that. And I'm basically gonna make a coloring page of shamrocks. There we go, might make another one right here, a smaller one. So I've made a few crosses, that's it. So simple. Now what I'm gonna do, to make my shamrocks, I'm gonna make hearts. And so if you've ever made a heart, and I'm sure you have, the line here, where the lines cross is gonna be the point of your heart. You're gonna have several hearts. So I'm gonna make a heart around this line. I'm going to come up and make half of the heart there. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna make the other half of my heart. And I just made one of the leaves on my shamrock. I'm gonna turn my paper and I'm gonna make another one right here. I'm gonna make one right there and a curve like that. There's another leaf. And I'm gonna come over to this guy and make a couple of curves. And right there, I have a shamrock. I'm gonna do the same with my other ones and then I'm gonna ink them in with Sharpie. But this way, I know I've got just what I need before I start using my Sharpie marker. There's that. You could make little ones and big ones. 
whatever you like. You could make your hearts a little chubbier. You could make them a little shorter. And I'm not worrying about pressing down on my pencil real hard because I'm gonna color over these lines with black Sharpie in just a minute. So I'm just drawing kind of light as a guide, just like that. This one I'm gonna do upside down, like that. There we go. You could make a four leaf clover if you want. Maybe I'll make this guy a four leaf clover. Just like that. Now I'm going to take my black Sharpie marker. And remember, if you don't have a tablecloth underneath you, like a plastic tablecloth, put something underneath your paper so that the Sharpie won't bleed through onto your mom's nice table or her really beautiful tablecloth. Okay, so just for show, I'm gonna put some paper underneath mine, pretending that I am protecting my table. So I'll keep my mom happy with me. Okay, here we go. Let's do some of this. Tracing over my lines. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make some of my hearts a little better as I go. You can follow your lines exactly, or you can modify them a little bit as you trace over with your Sharpie. I might just do the same on this one. Okay, this part takes a little time. This is the part of the video that you might want to fast forward through a little bit because I'm sure you're getting the idea. After I do these, I'm going to put some lines in for the leaves. I'll make some veins and then you'll see what's next. All right, now I'm gonna come down and do some of these. Give these leaves some veins. You might hear some music in the background if you're still with me and you're not fast forwarding. That's my son, Alex. He's practicing his guitar. All right. Well, I hope you guys are having a nice break while you're at home, getting to truly homeschool at home these couple of weeks. I hope you're staying well and washing your hands a whole lot. Maybe you're getting to sleep in and have some extra movie nights, or maybe you're just catching up on homework. But I hope that whatever you're doing, you're also doing some art. Whether you're drawing or painting or maybe you're creating in the kitchen with your mom. Maybe you're making some cookies or something. Maybe you're on vacation at the beach. And you could do some drawings in the sand and have your mom take a picture of them with her camera. That would be a lot of fun. Whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a nice week. Okay, we're almost done here. I'm almost done drawing the veins into my leaves. I hope that I'm showing this to you enough on the camera. It's kind of hard to take a video and do artwork at the same time. I'm not really professional at that yet, but maybe as we go, I'll get better at it. 
I guess YouTubing isn't as easy as it looks. Okay, let's do a few more here. Almost finished. Then the magic's gonna happen. Okay, I've created a coloring page. There it is, maybe you wanna add some stems. I think I'm gonna do that. A couple of stems. Now is the time, you can see that I still have some of my, I don't know if you can see it, I still have some of my pencil lines there, do you see that? Now would be the time to erase those. So if you have an eraser handy, you could go in and erase your pencil lines because your Sharpie dries fairly quickly. Just erase those lines because once we lay down the color, those lines really can't come up and be erased. So if you want to do that, now is the time. Okay, I've got a couple more here I'm gonna do. All right, now I'm gonna pull out my piece of foil here. Okay, put my paper away here. I'm gonna pull out my piece of foil. There's my foil. And I'm gonna make sure that my paper fits, and it does. I'm gonna use my black Sharpie, and I like to give myself a guide, so I'm gonna put some corners on my foil, and that helps me know where I need to marker. So when I pull my paper away, I know that I need to put color inside this area right here. So I'm gonna set this aside, and now you know, because you've done this before, you can use any colors. I like to lay my yellow or my light colors down first so that they don't mix with the darker colors later. And I'm gonna start coloring on that foil. And I'm gonna try to color all of my foil with markers in the area where I am gonna put my paper. I'm gonna put some green down and I'm using the side of the marker to really lay that color down. And I'm gonna lay a blue down in there too. I might mix in with some of the yellow here a little bit too. And if you have, let's see, I've got a lighter green here. I'm gonna lay some of this lighter green down. That's gonna be fun. As long as your markers are water-based, this will work. Again, you don't want to do this with colored Sharpie markers because they will not release off of the foil onto your paper in a minute when we spray the whole thing with water. Okay, I'm adding some little touches of blue. I'm do some there. And I really want to color most of the foil. That. I'm going to see if I can find, oh, here's a turquoise. I think I'll add some turquoise in, because that's kind of fun. I might do a little turquoise in the middle here, around the edges, fill in a few gaps, and that's pretty good. I'm feeling good about all that. Okay, here comes the fun part, the next to last part. Okay, so I've got my pens. I'm going to Set them away. I'm also going to take this paper that I'm going to use in a minute and I'm going to set it to the side so it won't get wet when I spray my spray bottle. I'm going to set my supplies aside. Now I just have this foil right here. In a minute, I'm going to spray the water on here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it over and press it right onto the foil. And when I turn it back up, it's going to have all the pretty colors on it. Okay. So here's my squirt bottle. I'm gonna give a few good squirts. I don't wanna overdo it, but I also don't wanna underdo it. I want enough water for everything to kind of blend around. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna set it down onto that foil, and I'm gonna press it. I'm gonna let that water and ink mixture kind of soak into my paper for a minute. And make sure it squeezes out to the edges. This is always the tricky part, getting just enough. Remember, if you use colors that are across the color wheel from each other, you could end up with brown. 
but I'm using analogous colors, which are the colors next to each other on the color wheel, so I shouldn't have any problem with a brown. All right, I think we're ready. Here we go. Let's peel this off and see what happens. Oh, cool. That turned out great. And there is my shamrock art. I'm going to let that dry. If you have a gold paint marker at home, you could add some uh, details with a gold paint marker, but that's super fun the way it is. I'm going to set it to the side so it can dry. Here's a piece of paper I did earlier doing the same thing on a larger sheet with a larger piece of foil. It's all dry now and I'm going to show you something we're going to do with that. But in the meantime, I still have a little bit of liquid over here. What you can do, you could wipe this off with a paper towel and you can do another one of these. So you can use the same piece of foil over and over, right? But since I've got a little bit of color on there, I'm going to lay this paper down just like this. It's a plain piece. And I'm going to soak up all that colored goodness. And I'll be able to use this for something else in the future. There. That looks kind of cool, too. All right. I'm going to set this aside now. And I have a little bit of dripping there. And I want to show you one more thing we can do. So I'm going to wipe off my foil so that I don't drip it all over the dining room floor. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. And I'm gonna show you one more thing that you could do. Oh, you know what? I was gonna do that other paper and I didn't, but I think you get the idea. Here's something else you could do. You could take a piece of cardstock like this and you could fold it in half. Maybe you have some nice thick paper at home. And I'm going to fold this in half, so there's a card that I've made. I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to make a St. Patrick's Day card with this paper that I made, which will be like this paper here, once it dries. Okay, so I'm going to take this paper that I made, and I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to draw some hearts. I'm going to draw a few hearts. I'm going to draw just like we did before. And I'm gonna draw another one there, another one there. And these lines I'm gonna use to cut out these hearts. So I'm just gonna cut out some hearts about the same shape and about the same size. Okay, let's try another one here. All right. So, where did I put my scissors? There they are. So I'm gonna cut this in half. So that I still have this half to use for something else later. And I'm gonna set that over there. Now I'm gonna cut these out a couple at a time. So I'm gonna go like this. And I'm gonna cut out these. Now if you really wanna get fancy, you could fold this in half like this, and fold and cut. There's a heart. I'm gonna do another one. I've got this one right here. In fact, I'm gonna go like this. And I'm going to fold it from where the corner is at the bottom of the heart through this part right here. And I'm not being exact. I'm just kind of experimenting as I go. So if your heart doesn't turn out perfect, it's okay. These aren't perfect hearts. But by folding them in half, they turn out like that. Let's try this one again. I'm just gonna fold this in half without um, penciling it first. And I'm just gonna go like this. You've probably done this before. There you go, okay? Now I could take these three. I'm gonna do one more. And I'm gonna do this guy right here and I'm gonna fold him in half from his point 
to that part right there, like that. And then I'm gonna go like this, cutting about where the lines are. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Now, you can take these hearts and do the same thing that we did over there, but you can lay them on your card and you can build a shamrock with a glue stick and you can glue these down for a really cute shamrock. So here's my glue stick. And then I'm gonna glue these on just like this. So I'm gonna glue that one on about like that. I'm gonna put these at a little bit of an angle because I think that looks cute. There we go. Now I've made sure that this paper was good and dry before I started cutting and pasting, but it's nice and dry. I could add another one here if I wanted to. I might cut out one more. Let's see if I can make this one a little bit bigger than what I drew. Okay, a little bit here, all the way up to the top and down and around. How about this? I'm gonna glue this one down and I am gonna give this card to someone in my family. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna write something on my card. I have a couple of green pens here and I'm gonna write down, first of all, I'm gonna give my shamrock, I think I'm gonna give it a stem. This right there. And I'm gonna write, I am so lucky. I am so lucky. And on the inside, I'll write something like, to have a friend, oops, like, You could say, I am so lucky to have a mom like you, or a dad like you, or a sister, or a brother like you. And then you've made a cute card, and you've had fun doing it. You can make so many of these prints. Here's this one, still drying. It's kind of floppy, but once it dries, it'll stiffen up again. You could cut this up and do something with it, too. So there are a couple of things you can do this week while you're home with just markers, a spray bottle, a piece of foil, and some paper. You can use copy paper, see how that works, but if you have a little bit stiffer paper, that's probably better. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys when we get back together again, and I'll have another video for you um, next week. All right, take care. Bye-bye.